Oh. WWE made a number of major cuts in various departments Tuesday in a consolidation effort. This from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Those within the company categorized the reason as a re-examining of the business due to COVID-19 and discovering a lot of redundancy in duties. Let me just read that one more time. Those within the company categorized the reason as a re-examining of the business due to COVID-19 and discovering a lot of redundancy in duties. The result is that some divisions will be merging under Executive Vice President of Television Production Kevin Dunn. I can only imagine the celebrations happening today as those that have not been fired are now being told that they will be working directly under Kevin Dunn. Very popular person within WWE. The biggest name let go was J.L.R. Donlin, Executive Vice President of Advanced Media, while the other major name release was Brian Pelagato, Senior Vice President of Production. The advanced media departments in both the U.S. and U.K. were heavily pared down, which included producers, associate producers, and those in both digital and WWE Network. One example of a redundancy that was noted to us was the presence of two different graphics departments, one for television and one for digital. The company, which currently occupies two buildings in Stamford, Connecticut, will be moving into a single new building next year, the construction of which was delayed due to the pandemic. Well, where to begin right here? First off, you remember all those times that there would be something up on WWE social media and it would be like talking about a match that was not on Raw or it would be talking about a match that was going to be on Raw but then wasn't? How many times did I say, one hand doesn't always know what the other hand is doing? Well, as noted here, there were multiple social media departments and uh, and one hand always didn't know what the other hand was doing. Doesn't mean that I think that one should be, uh, you know, uh, like whatever, like everyone fired. I don't think they should do that. But I mean, maybe there could be better communication. But they decided to just merge these departments and get rid of some people. So that's one thing. So then the other thing that I just could not help but notice, because I want to read this sentence one more time. Those within the company categorize the reason as a re-examining of the business due to COVID-19 and discovering a lot of redundancy in duties. Redundancy, you say. You know what's redundant? What's redundant is having 40 writers for a wrestling television show. There has never been another company in history that employed 40 writers, okay? It's never happened before. In fact, back in the old days, there would be, like, the booker, and that would be it. And then, you know, as time passed, eventually, and we saw this a lot in, in WCW, there'd be your Eric Bischoff, and then there would be, for example, your Kevin Sullivan. And it certainly was not 40 people, but it was more than one. And I remember at the time, I always just hear, nobody has any idea what's going on. Nobody knows who's in charge. Nobody knows who they need to talk to. Well, people know who's in charge now. It's Vince McMahon, but 40 writers for a television show. Do you guys watch Raw? Does Raw strike you as a program that requires 40 writers? I mean, it appears that they've got like 15 wrestlers because the same people just do the same matches every single week. It's like, that's like three writers per wrestler. Now, I understand thinking out of the box. I understand going, you know what? Television shows employ multiple writers. Why, we're a television show. Maybe we should try hiring 40 people to write a television show. Listen. Any idea is an idea, and you can try any idea. If an idea ends up being a good idea, great. If an idea ends up being a bad idea, well, that's fine as well. I see no evidence that having 40 writers is a benefit in putting together a professional wrestling television show. I watch Raw. I watch SmackDown. Not once have I said, you know what? This is significantly better than any other wrestling television show that I've ever watched in my lifetime. I think it's a great idea. Every company should have 40 writers. Not one time in my life have I ever thought that. If anything, all I've thought is, we got too many writers. So if you want to talk about redundancy, I would say that having 40 writers for a wrestling television show is rather redundant. You know what else is redundant? 
having three announcers in an announce booth. Which brings us to our next story here. I'm sure you will be shocked to learn that Adnan Verk's WWE on-air tenure is over after less than two months as the company announced Tuesday that they and Verk have mutually agreed to part ways. WWE thanks Adnan for his work, the brief statement read. In a tweet, Verk thanked WWE, Corey Graves, and Byron Saxon. Now, before I read more of this, let me remind everybody of the story. So you had an announced team on Raw, and there were uh, three people there, and, uh, and they decided they were going to get rid of some people, uh, one of them being, I, I believe Tom Phillips was on Raw. Like, these these commentators, they all run together. I don't know who was where, but Tom Phillips was a commentator for a long time. And whatever you want to say about Tom Phillips, he actually was pretty good at his job. He may have been the best lead announcer that they've got in WWE. You also had Samoa Joe, who was a, a excellent professional wrestler, he was out with concussion issues, and so the idea was, well, uh, we'll have him be an announcer. And he did a very good job at it. Well, one day we learn, Samoa Joe's out of here. Tom Phillips is out of here. God bless the guy, but Byron Saxton is now on the announce team, along with Corey Graves. And we have a new lead announcer of Monday Night Raw. A new lead announcer of Monday Night Raw. His name is Adnan Verk. Now, I realize there's a famous saying that hindsight is 2020. I welcome all of you to go back and listen to this show when they hired Adnan Verk. I said the exact same thing then that I'm going to say right now. Adnan Verk never called pro wrestling in his life. No experience. Adnan Verk wasn't even a regular viewer of WWE programming. They hired a guy because he had a resume, this should sound familiar, he had a resume doing a certain job, and they decided that he would be a perfect fit to be the lead announcer on the company's number one longest-running television show, Monday Night Raw. He knew nothing about wrestling. He didn't know any of the moves. He didn't know anything, okay? Now, I understand hiring somebody because they came from ESPN and putting them in... Uh, the Byron Saxton role, an analyst role, whatever, okay, where there's two other people that can carry the load. No, he was the lead announcer, and he had no experience and didn't watch pro wrestling. Hello? Turns out he wasn't very good at the job. Seemed like a nice guy. I got nothing against Ed non Verk, friendly chap. But, bro, the lead wrestling announcer on a wrestling show... Didn't ever watch wrestling, had never done this job before. What do you think's going to happen? Well, what happened is the same thing that everyone figured was going to happen on day one. He didn't last very long. Now, God bless the guy because, you know, WWE is. You got to make a statement when you have been released. Why is Adnan Verk no longer with WWE? Well, Adnan Verk says, The weekly travel, along with my other jobs was a grind for me and my family. Nobody alerted Adnan Verk that he was going to travel to Ra every week. This caught him off guard when he began doing this job. They're not even on the road yet. Now, I don't know where he lives. I'm sure he had to travel every week. But, like, this is what they came up with for why Adnan Verk is no longer doing this job. The weekly travel. I'm heading to a break. I'll be right back. Wrestling Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.